Old Tom Bombadil is a merry fellow. Bright blue his jacket is, and his boots are yellow. Hey everyone, Yoiston here with a different sort of epic character history for you all today. Recently I've been getting a lot of comments to do a Tom Bombadil video, and I thought that I should put all the facts and possible explanations for this character into one video. We'll start with his known history and go into what he could be the result of. Let's get into it. Tom Bombadil, or also known as Irwain Benadar, by the Elves, or Forn by the Dwarves, or Orald by the Middlemen, is a figure of unknown origin in Tolkien's Legendarium. He lives with his wife, Goldberry, the River Daughter, in the Old Forest, on the outskirts of Buckland, on the west side, and the Barrow Downs on the east side. He has a blue jacket, yellow boots, and he wears a hat, with a feather placed into it. Usually the feather was a swan feather, but he also acquired the feather of a kingfisher too. His wrinkles on his happy face tell of much time passing in his life, and his height was less than that of a man or elf, but more than that of a dwarf or a hobbit, at about five feet tall. It seems that Tom lived here since before Melkor went east towards Middle-earth in the First Age. However, Tom is oldest and fatherless, so it is believed that he lived alone in the Old Forest, possibly before the First Age or the Times of the Sun, and in his land he lived a peaceful life, watching over the birds and nature of the Old Forest. He was there when the forests of Middle-earth began to decrease, and it seems that he met Goldberry sometime after the elves came east from Beleriand, as there are some elvish qualities about the River Daughter, but it is entirely possible that they met sometime earlier. Again, it's really unrecorded. As for Goldberry, she was also immortal, and Tom said that he found her long ago by the pool where he gathered water lilies from the Withawindle River, near to his house. Goldberry had long yellow hair, and her voice was a very beautiful kind of soprano, I would imagine. Her height was average, she was probably taller than Tom. It seems that she was also immortal, as she stayed alongside Tom Bombadil. Now, in the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien that I'll get to in a little bit later as well, Tolkien describes Goldberry as the seasonal change, and Tom Bombadil as the, the English countryside, so you can kind of see how the two have an effect on each other. So, Goldberry is the change of, of the forest and the nature and the seasons around Tom, and Tom is the constant. He stays the idea of nature and simplicity among growth. Tom kept an eye on Old Man Willow, a tree that lures nearby creatures into sleep with his songs, and Tom became a friend of those who discovered him, at least for those of the free peoples that discovered him. It doesn't seem like Sauron, Melkor, or any of their forces found Tom, or even knew about his existence, which might have been because of Tom protecting the Old Forest and his whereabouts. He watched the rise and fall of the nearby kingdom of Cardolan in the Third Age, and his powers might actually be the reason that they held so long against the Witch King of Angmar in wartime with him. We also know that far later in the Third Age, Tom and his wife Goldberry house Frodo, Sam, Merry, and Pippin after their encounter with Old Man Willow. During their stay, Tom displays his power over the One Ring by putting it on one of his fingers to no effect, and making it disappear and reappear at will. Tom comes to the Hobbit's rescue in the Barrow Downs, and he finds a brooch to give to Goldberry, likely from a woman of Cardolan that he might have actually known once, as he says, quote, Here is a pretty toy for Tom and for his lady. Fair was she who long ago wore this on her shoulder. Goldberry shall wear it now and we will not forget her." End quote. This brooch signifies just how old and mystical Tom actually is, and how he might have known the people who made the brooch, as well as the other items alongside the hobbits within the burrows. Tom Bombadil is mentioned in the Council of Elrond as a potential keeper of the One Ring by Elrond who met him long before, after Frodo reminded him of Tom's existence during the recounting of his tale before arriving to Rivendell. But Gandalf counters, saying that Tom would likely lose the ring, as he has no care for it or its powers on others because it has no power on him. To him, it's just another trinket. And the last we hear of Tom is actually after the War of the Ring, when Gandalf spends time with the Moss Gatherer, as he's called, and finds that he wouldn't care to hear about the Lord of the Rings or the Return of the King from the Hobbits, but he would actually likely only be interested in hearing about the Ents and Treebeard as well as Fangorn Forest itself. 
Thus, afterwards, nothing is heard about Tom or his Goldberry. In the book entitled The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, nothing can really more be learned about Tom as it is a collection of poems on nature in Middle-earth, as well as a few other topics throughout Tolkien's Legendarium. Tom seems to be an embodiment of a natural power of the Earth, and he is the literary counterpart of the Ent Treebeard in many different ways. They are both called the eldest being in Middle-earth, and they are both masters and guardians of two separate forests. And both Treebeard and Tom want to remain neutral in wars and politics, and take only the side of nature and the forest, but both are dragged into participating in the War of the Ring by necessity for life and preservation, or by charity to save other beings that they come to care for. Now, let's get into some theories and possible explanations of who Tom might actually be. It is widely speculated that Tom could be a Maya, or even a Vala, as he is called the Master and the Eldest. I know what you all might be thinking, well, he can't be a Vala, as they're all accounted for. And which Maya would he be, as most of them are accounted for, and have names and different histories and lores? But to that I say that the theory is definitely a possibility, as in literature, the personification of a certain idea or aspect is a very common motif. And it is possible that Tom is actually a personification of a Vala, or even Iluvatar himself on Middle-earth. Because Iluvatar doesn't really take a form in Valinor or anything like that, he just kind of is, as an almighty god would be. But it could be that alongside of being, he also exists as Tom Bombadil, just to kind of be within his creation. And it's possible that just one of the Ainur, or a god, or a Vala, could want to put themselves on Middle-earth directly, against maybe the will of others, but they would want to see with the human form the nature of their creations, as long as they remain mostly neutral and secluded from wars and peoples. It's definitely a possibility. Another theory, and one that I really like, is that Tom is a personification of the Song of the Ainur, or the Song of Creation that manifested the world through the voices of the Ainur. I really like this theory, and it would explain his love for music and songs and singing, but again, how could it be that he's not accounted for among the Ainur? But it is definitely possible that, just like with a conductor, not knowing about an overtone or a discord until he hears it and likes it, it is possible that Tom was just kind of an unexplained and unanticipated byproduct of the Song of the Ainur, something that maybe even Iluvatar himself didn't plan. There are many more theories out there and arguments for and against each theory, but truly we will never know as Tolkien purposefully left him as an enigma of his fantasy, as he says, quote, And even in a mythical age there must be some enigmas, as there always are. Tom Bombadil is one, intentionally. End quote. This is stated in one of the letters of J.R.R. Tolkien, number 144, dated at 1954. I want to end the theory section of the video on a head-scratcher for you guys. Is it possible? Now, this is just speculation on my part, and there might be direct contradictions to this possible theory, but this is something that I was thinking about on my own as I was making this video. Is it possible that the Feia, or spirit of Tom Bombadil, is the same Feia, or spirit, as Treebeard, thus making him the same being as Treebeard or Fangorn. It's interesting, and it would make actually a lot of literary sense for the two characters to actually be one, because they have a lot of similarities, they're both connected very well, they're definitely literary parallels for each other, they both protect forests, they have encounters with hobbits, among other free peoples, they both have good relationships with Gandalf. I don't know, it's just something to think about. Now I know that there are differences between the two characters as well, and it's just speculation on my part, as we'll truly never know. I do like that they are two different characters, and indeed, Treebeard considers himself to be a free person on the old list, and Tom doesn't consider himself to be. So there are definitely arguments against and for this theory. So it's just an interesting thought to keep in mind the next time you read about those two characters. And the next time you do, look for similarities between the two. It's pretty interesting, actually. My literature teacher taught me to look out for these connections, and I hope you all do as well. It makes reading anything all the more interesting. Let me know what you all think about these theories in the comments below. What do you think could be true for Tom, and what do you think is completely false? Let me know. Ultimately, Tom Bombadil serves to personify the power of the passive guardian of nature. If we all serve the world around us, and come to love nature as Tolkien did, we'll find that the ideas of lust and power and greed to control and dominate others just aren't that appealing at all.
Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope this video was able to answer a few questions. I want to thank so many of you for recommending this and so many other topics that are to come. Before making this video, I was actually planning to do my next epic character history on Samwise Gamgee, and I'd still really like to make that video if you guys all wanted within the next few weeks. It would be a rather short video as there isn't much to tell about Sam that we don't get in our Lord of the Rings, but I could definitely go into his full history and analysis if you all would want me to. In the end, it's your call. Join us on Facebook through the link in the description for updates on the channel and other Middle Earth news. Leave this video a like if you enjoyed it, and share it with a friend who you think might like it. Thank you guys for watching and joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.